Welcome to the Secrets to Mindful Health podcast. I am your host, Beth Warren. Today we're going to be speaking about a topic always near near and dear to my heart, which is work-life balance with us busy mamas. And also the importance of emotional and physical health with who I consider one of the best experts on all these topics. I have Shushi here. Shushi is the owner of Cooking in Heels on Instagram, a platform with delicious recipes, but she is also a nurse practitioner and mommy. So welcome, Shushi. Hi, Beth. Thank you so much for having me here. It's been an absolute pleasure um, getting to speak with you again and also you know getting to see you again it's been so long um but I'm so thrilled to be here thank you for having me I know I'm thrilled as well um I thought you would be the expert on this topic because you offer so much perspective and I'm not even sure if your whole platform knows everything you possibly do because I know on your own I don't want to say you downgrade it, but one thing you've shared with me is that you don't want people to always feel like they could be superheroes and doing it all because I look at someone like you and I'm like, oh my gosh, how do you do it all? So first, if you could just share a sense of what you do, I would love for you to just tell me even what you do in a day, but what what do you do? What What's your platform about? Like, what's your, what's your day like? Well, first of all, I'm absolutely flattered because I think the same thing about you. Like, I don't know how you do it all. Um, second... I, I don't even know all that I do. I I definitely don't keep track, but on a daily basis, um, I work full time as a nurse practitioner in Columbia. I love it. Um, and I have four children. Uh, I just had my fourth. So still in that very new postpartum phase. Um, and I also have a cooking blog and I recipe develop. So my blog is more like social media facing where I don't post on like a website. I tried that for a while and it was just abysmal. Um, But I, um, I do weekly recipes, sometimes more than once a week and, you know, try to get it all in between carpools and um, making dinner every night and, and just my regular job. It's, it's definitely a lot but I love all of it. So I don't want to give any of it up. Right. I'd love to deep more dive more into that because it's hard to do it all. But I think you said two key points. One is that you love it. So I think I say the same thing to people when they're thinking about getting into something. I always ask, is it something that you feel passionate about? Because the only way to balance multiple things is if you really love in essence, what you're doing. Otherwise, it starts to feel extra draining. I don't want to say super draining because it is still draining in in some capacity, but it's hard to find that in yourself. So what is it that helps you get through some of that stuff in terms of like feeling overwhelmed or just there's so much to juggle? Like, how can we help people try to pursue, let's say, all the passions they have um, despite feeling obvious, overwhelming feelings? Yeah, this is this is a huge one. And I vacillate between different mediums, but usually my most effective ones is my lists, where I actually, I know it sounds counterintuitive to sit down and take some time to make yourself a list and get yourself organized, because then you're taking away time from other, other things. But if you actually sit down and get yourself organized, where you're, you know, you're saying, I have these things to complete logistically, how can I complete them within my, my time span? And then, um, sometimes I'll write it down. Sometimes I'll put it into an app. I definitely have lists of my lists. So (laughs) there's that, um, I find there's an app I use, it's called minimalist. It allows you to, um, categorize different, um, areas of your life, which I find really helpful for all the different things that I do. And then it allows you to allot certain time blocks for that amount of, um, for whatever activity you're going to be doing. So let's say I expect to spend 25 minutes filming and recording or editing a video. Um, so 
I'll actually place the time block and it won't allow you to like move out of the app for that time period. So you're really just focused on that one task. It also can play like some white noise or calming music. And I find it really keeps me focused. Um, that being said, I'm not always that organized. I like to prioritize my tasks so that I can get the first ones done first. Um, and I will say there's a lot of times where I just there are some of the things I have to like de-escalate and, and say, this is just not going to happen. So looking at things realistically and saying, I'm not able to do this is also like totally reasonable. Another thing is help is so important. So asking for help from whoever and wherever you can get it, whether it's, you know, your parents, um, or your family, if you happen to have them nearby, or um, neighbors and friends, um, dropping your kids off for play dates is like a huge one. Um, you know, wherever you can get help, you should ask for it because you know there are other there are people who want to ask for help from you, and it's great when you have that mutually beneficial relationship with them. That is really key. I mean, the other thing you said earlier about well, first of all, I'm going to use that app because that is crazy. And I have to make playlists for my background music because it helps me focus. Or I always did my best work in coffee shops because I had blurred noise, depending on what job I was going to do. I was just more efficient with time in that sense. But you did share about um, the importance of support. And I, I had to get over asking for help. Well, period. But because also our nature is when we take on so many things, we feel like we could just take on more things. Um, and that's actually the first thing I wanted to address, how you learned or got comfortable with saying no, because in essence, what we do, both of us is like, we like to do a lot of things and we do the things that we love. And then we feel like we could just get more. You could get stuck in the cycle of just taking on more and more. How did you learn how to make that call of knowing when to say no and verbalizing that? <laughs> um it never happened but to be totally honest it's not that I it's not that I say no I push things off because ideally I'd like to get things done at certain points in my life it's just that there are seasons of life where you're busier and where you're less busy so the, if there's something I really want to do and I just don't have time for it right now I say let's reschedule at a later date because I want to do this, but it's just not feasible within my time frame. But if there's something like, if there's something that I really don't want to do mm -hmm. and I need to say no, I say that really just doesn't fit within my schedule right now. Or um, this doesn't sound like it's, if it's, if it's, you know, something professional. If it's something like with my blog, I say that doesn't really fit with my brand or it's not something I'm looking to promote right now. It's not a hard no. It's just, uh, you know, come back to me when it looks better. Right. For me, for you, you know. Is that something that came with experience or time or even let's say a confidence in what you do or or I would expect maybe like trying it a few times and then seeing the result was so beneficial. Like how, how do we get more people more comfortable in that type of language and confidence in saying no? Yeah, there was, there were a lot of things that I had to learn the hard way. Um, for example, demos. I love doing demos because it's so nice to be able to see your audience firsthand appreciating exactly what you're doing. I always found it like, super fascinating that people were just like, oh, I'm actually interested in what you're doing. I'm not just like liking a post. I always think like social media is just like a flood of images and you're just liking a post because it's there. But when it actually comes down to meeting people in real life and, and getting to see what, what their response is to what you're doing, it's, it's fascinating. That being said, the amount of work that goes into a demo is just not possible for me. Mm -hmm. So there were, it took a little time for me to figure this out, but I have to say no to demos period, because there's absolutely no way I'm going to be able to prepare all the ingredients and get myself to the space while also working till 6 PM on every day and having four kids and having a new baby. I can't and, 
vlogging. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just not possible. Right. So no matter how much you pay me, it's not going to get me over to where, where, you know, I want to present to people. It, it hurts me to say no, but at the same time, it's just like, where am I fitting it? So I say, I'm so sorry. I'm not able to do demos at this time. I have so many wonderful friends that I'd love to refer to you. Would you like to hear their names? Right. And this way, I don't feel like I'm letting them off because it's a no, but I'm providing them with an option for somebody else. Somebody who right. I think is also going to do a great job. And it also provides me with an opportunity to give my friends business. Yeah. It's You're always great with that. I do have to say You're very supportive always. I um, so I think, yeah, but I think what you're saying is, um, well, first of all, we're talking about boundaries here ultimately and how important they are in setting boundaries, um, learning how to say no, but in such a way of grace, I find that even for me, I'm still finding your, I want to say calm in it, just so you know, you sound very calm in it. What I mean by that is <laughs> if, I, if I finally say no, it comes out very aggressive because I should have said no 20 years ago. You know, like I waited way too long. I started to build a resentment. I was feeling all feelings beyond it, just sort of being a very simple, straightforward no. So my goal is to aspire to your level. You know, people phrase things like a muscle, right? You know, I'm all about workouts and stuff, but literally like it's exercising a new muscle, even in your brain and how you verbalize things and boundaries. Like this is also exercises and I'm getting better because one person phrased, well, you know, you go from one extreme to the next. If you're not great at setting boundaries, you, you sort of swing into being like really aggressive about setting boundaries. And then you recognize, okay, that's not necessarily the best way to handle this because you want to, like you seem to do like build relationships from that, like, like bring in other people, like create this like community in your nose, you know, like you make this a whole like nice experience versus like running to, oh no. And then it, it seems very dramatic. So I want to find your calm. And, and what was helpful for me to hear is that like, it's not, not normal that when you start setting boundaries, it's, it's a muscle you have to exercise and you might swing the other way. But then when you feel people's reactions and also how you feel, like ultimately what we're saying here is, is boundaries are meant for you as a person and you need to come away feeling good about them in some way. And if you're, trying to set a boundary and then feeling bad about that too, because then you feel like you hurt people and you didn't approach it the right way. Okay. So you got to get a revisit, you know, where, and I think that comes from the decision in the moment of this is the time to say, no, don't try to take it on and really know the whole time. So I wonder if let's say, you know, whenever I mentioned journaling, it's like mentioning to exercise to people who quote unquote hate exercise. Like they just like eye roll and they're like, don't even bring up that word to me. It becomes very dramatic, but I wonder if, if you kind of, like you said, you know, you're into apps, like I'm sure there's an app or a way to make a list of just maybe, maybe it's even goal setting for 2024, so to speak of like, where, of, of what boundaries you want to place for yourself that you, you don't feel great about like areas in your life you don't feel great about. And then how you can make boundaries for them to feel better. I, I definitely think that's so attainable. Actually, I'm not into downloading like a ton of apps. Mm -hmm. Like here, I'll show you my lock screen. It's like, it's so minimalist. Oh my God. I'm, I'm, I, this is it. oh, wow. Hold on. I this see it. it. And anyone watching our YouTube for secrets to mindful health, you can see it. Um, it doesn't have a swipe. It's just one, one page, you know, as I'm getting more into deeper into social media, um, I'm, I'm downloading more apps that I literally don't use. So I, you're refreshing my whole, and I don't even, don't even tell me how many emails you have. Cause I'm like over a hundred thousand emails. So don't, don't, <laughs> you're, I don't zero. know. <laughs> how do you get to zero? Because I unsubscribe from all spam and then anything I need to get back to you, I, I pin, but otherwise I give responses pretty much right away. I don't know how mine even escalates then. I feel so wild compared to you. Yeah, but it's just, it's a priority I have. My husband- Yeah, no, I really can't stand- A thousand emails. emails. I wonder how to just get the, I would love to just get all of them from zero, pretend the, that areas of my life didn't exist prior and just like start fresh would be a very good feeling. But I mean, that was a great point to bring up too. So it seems like you're very careful like of your space as best as you can be in a sense. And- um 
handle things as they come. It's really like such an art form. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I wanted you on here is because I, I also want you to recognize like how, um, like, first of all, how proud of you I am, but like how like exceptional you are in that, in that space. So I know, cause I know when we're all dealing with our lives, things feel overwhelming and, and like, we're, we're not doing things right. Like this isn't about like, oh, I have it all together, but it really is like such an accomplishment of yours to have found that kind of balance in, in like protecting your space in that sense, at least, um, even though it might not always work out. Um, I, yes. I want to say I've had, sorry, I didn't mean to okay. interrupt you, but I've had great role models. First of all, my grandmother and my mother were both full-time working women and they, handled so much so it was great to get to see that growing up and just accepting that as a fact I'm hoping that my daughters well I don't want them to be like overworking themselves like I do mm -hmm. but I'd love to see them be able to to think that they can handle anything not that they have to be super mom but you know that they can handle anything also another perspective that I've had is that my husband he's very relaxed in a way that I was not growing up my I remember when we first got married and my husband like our phone was ringing nonstop. everybody wanted to check in see how we're how we are and my husband said just because you have a phone does not mean you have to pick it up if it's not convenient for you mm. just because somebody sends you a text does not mean you have to reply if you don't have the answer so of course that's why he has 10,000 emails and I do <laughs> <laughs> But um, you didn't get that memo yet. Yeah. So that just that perspective helped me like anytime somebody approaches me with a question about, you know, what I'm able to do, what I'm not able to do. It's OK for me to step back and say. Does this fit into something I want to do? Is this something I have time for? Is me doing this going to extend in other areas of my life to make the other areas feel pressured? For example, Am I trading more time with my children to where I can bond with them and I think that they'll benefit from it if I take this job, if I take this offer, if I take this time? If yes, then I have to decide if that's something I really want to take. If not, then I can say like, yes, sure. And then also, is even if I have time for it, is it something my husband will have time for? Because let's say I'm going out at night, is he available to babysit? Not babysit, but you know, watch mm -hmm. the children. Um, or is it something that like, I will, like, he's not going to be able to handle because he sometimes works really late hours. So, you know, it's weighing that whole picture versus just feeling like I have to pressure, answer, whatever, and feeling like I'm forced into a corner. You're never forced into a corner when somebody's asking you a question take the um, time and breathe through it. I was just going to get to that part about, you mentioned like a very big word, like pressured. Um, I actually recently posted on Instagram more about when you're trying to make a decision about a diet, you might want to go on, like take space, breathe and think of how it makes you feel thinking of going on this because let's say when people work with me and I'm more lifestyle based and I look to get at root issues and stuff, even though we all have like anticipatory anxiety, or if you if you take on a project, I'm sure you still feel a little anxiety about it because you want to get it done. But it's more like an adrenaline rush in a way that's productive or functional, not necessarily negative. But there is a sense of like, oh, this feels right to me, too. And I think that, like you said, that takes like space and breath. I do have to get better at that too. Like you sometimes, I mean, I have gotten a lot better, but I would say only like 40% where you don't have to rush to make a decision. You have to give things time. And first of all, if people can't honor that, then that says a lot about how that relationship or job would have been. And we yes, all remember that. Definitely. And if you can, then you make a decision where you're even more, let's say committed or have things more mapped out in a way that's less stressful, whatever it is, because you took the time to think. And I do need to get better. I have gotten a lot better, but it's so much to say with taking breath and space to feel not pressured about it. And then if the pressure doesn't go away or just gets worse, then you might need to let it go. But I, I don't think letting go does, or I'll ask you this question, does letting go feel okay? Or do we still feel 
like, oh, we, I wish I did, or I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, it depends on the project and it depends like how you're letting go. If you're letting go in the middle of the project, that never feels great because mm. that's a bad reflection on you because I'm sorry, it's not a bad reflection on you, but it means that you really have more to learn in terms of what your boundaries are, mm -hmm. how you like, either you follow things through or you, if you think you're not going to be able to follow through for any reason, you have to say no. Like if you give your word for something, I learned that if you, my mom taught me, <laughs> if you give your word for something, that's, you know, you're saying you're going to follow through and you're going to make sure it happens. Mm -hmm. I still feel bad about some decisions I didn't follow through on like 15 years ago. I think about them weekly. Right. Um, that being said, if it's something that you actually step back and you're comfortable with your decision to, to let it go in those circumstances, yes, there's, there's like a little bit of FOMO. Like let's say some of these dinners that mm -hmm. had, I love going to those, but like, you know, it's not always feasible. There's like, you didn't go to Baltimore with us, which was three and a half hour all exhausted, I... smiling on camera, but being like, I'm on my bed because it was such a beautiful experience. I'm still happy I went, but it's, it's, it's always a, a trade-off basically. Also sometimes, like sometimes it's not a perfect decision. Um, I think in those reasons, in those times, it helps me to think of what my like ultimate goal is or, or yeah. where I see myself. And then sometimes saying, okay, I understand this is a stepping stone. That's for example, like a very obvious one is when you take on something for free and you're like, oh, but I know like my expertise is giving so much value or I know I'm bringing them so much business, but you have to just accept the free thing because you know that it will be a stepping stone to something else. So it's very hard to do that. But I think what we're both saying, and I know us both is like, we're going to commit a hundred percent to whatever it is we say we do anyway. It just gives you a sense of like, eh, but okay. But eh. like, meaning not every decision is one going to not make you feel guilty after or FOMO, like you're saying, or something. And also taking the decision does, isn't always necessarily like, oh, so that means I'm great with it. Right. By the way, that Flashix things, I really, really wanted to come, but I asked Lomo if he thinks that it, it would be at all feasible to have a crying newborn in the oh, car yeah. for, for the 12 hours. And he's like, uh, I'm yeah, like, it was definitely road tripping for everyone wondering the Flashix magazine, they're friends of ours and they have a great um, Jewish food uh, magazine and they have the a lot best. of these the best it really is and Even they have a lot of excursions yeah they have a lot of excursions sometimes that they invite us all which is so nice of them and we love it they're always like a fun time but it's taking time out of your day life everything to jump on and go and that's what makes it exciting so that's what we're saying also there's like an adrenaline aspect there's like a fun exciting aspect but then you gotta weigh your like realistic priorities I, I I switched all my clients that day to the next day and luckily they were supportive of it but if they weren't I wouldn't have been able to go so also it's recognizing when things just aren't working out like sometimes you do want it and you put the steps in motion but things beyond your control are like uh-uh but then I leave it up to God in that sense then I'm like oh okay like I did my due diligence and it literally didn't happen so that's when I know that God's involved I mean God's always involved but that's when it's clear right and going back to that point about following through when there are things beyond your control, then, you know, there's only so much you can do. Like, remember about three years ago, our house burnt down. Yes. So I had a lot of things that were due that week mm -hmm. and I had to go over to the people that I was speaking with. And I said, listen, I really, really want to continue our relationship, but my house burned down. And there was nothing I can do to prevent it happening from before I, you know, planned our content. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to deliver. And all of them were really understanding. That being said, hopefully nobody nobody's house is going to burn down. But being if you have a good relationship with your clients and you follow through regularly with them, or if it's a new relationship, you're totally honest with them and you let them know what's going on and you fully intend to deliver. Give them a time frame. Right. Tell them when it would be possible for you to follow through. Right. So say I have to put a short delay and here's how, here's how I expect that we'll move forward. I don't want to, you know, deprioritize your work right now, but 
I do need to take some time for myself. Yeah, that's what I wanted to bring up now. First of all, I appreciate you sharing that. I actually had a fire when I was in first grade. I don't know if you ever knew that. My house I didn't. No, I know. I what an interesting bonding moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what I can say, so thank God you're safe and everything like yes, that. I but um, but I wonder also like from a, a mental capacity in that sense, like, so sure, you know, it's amazing to hear absolutely that like you, you dealt with that, with the relationships that you have, you knew how to articulate yourself. It just was what it was. I, I know that was a very like obvious example for the message, but in a situation like that, I mean, talk about an extreme situation. Like how were you able to get back to a level of being even productive? Like how, like, cause let's say we just deal with any life challenges people face um, and, and extreme ones, even at that, cause you can't control everything. Like how do you, build yourself back to a place of being um, productive. And especially when other people are relying on you and work is relying on you and kids are relying on you. Uh, I will be honest, my mental health took a real toll. But when you're in a situation like that, it's it's kind of like adrenaline takes over and you just work through things. Like I remember calling into work that day and saying, my house burned down, I'll be back tomorrow, but I need today to like buy clothes. Right. Um, and I think part of it, because I have like a real job at, you know, a corp, like a corporate job, it really helps me figure out like what moves you need to make are. And I kind of like apply the same thing to my recipe developing and blogging because people expect to be dealing with a professional. So therefore I should be professional. Right. Um, and when it came down to like, like once we recouped our losses, like we were living in our friends' houses for a couple of weeks, and I was like, "Please, can I borrow some of your kitchen so I could make my recipes?" Aww. And they're like, "Sure!" Like they were so happy to help. But um, yeah, though it was definitely tougher. But then again the end goal where I actually do rely on, you know, the financial aspect of it mm -hmm. that needed to be done too, especially because my house burned down. Right. So, yeah. It's, it's like mind over matter at that point. I didn't even deal with the emotional aspect of it until, until a few years later. Right. Like, there was just like getting out of the immediate situation. I think yeah. that's important for people to realize too, like, you know, in a great way, there's a lot of talk about mental health these days. And I love that. I love that like a, a lot, not all, but like a lot of the stigma is like away, like people share if they're in therapy, not everyone, but some like it's a, it's a little more conversational these days, which I mean, people know I'm such an advocate of all like therapies. I, I love when even a teacher might be like, I, I think your daughter might benefit from OT and they're nervous because sometimes they get a reaction. I'm like, I love therapy. Like give me, give my kids all the therapy. I love therapy in every way. I think it's exceptional. And But I think it's important what you said that you don't always have to be like, okay, I need to take care of my mental health. If like you have to deal with step one, step one is like, I have no home. Like I need to this, I have work commitments. Like I have my kids, but it's also really nice to see that you kind of went back to it even at a later date. Like there's no timeline. I think that's what people also need to realize other than the deadlines we discussed. Of right. Work. No, on mental health, timeline. there's no timeline unless of course you're a danger to yourself or others. Please Please check yourself into the nearest That's nurse practitioner <laughs> Shashi speaking. Nurse practitioner Shashi is speaking. Okay. Yes, but um, no. If, if there's no timeline for you to fix your mental health, it's it's number one. It's never an endpoint. You're always a work in progress. There's going to be ups and there's going to be downs, and you're never going to be healed. That's not what happens. It's mm -hmm. like it's like a yeah. I think that's a big misconception too. I, I don't even like the word healed. Like right. we're not a boo boo. <laughs> no right. there, are, there are times where it becomes less painful to talk about mm -hmm. but th that's it that's all you can expect from yourself your your work in progress yeah I agree completely okay if we have to leave everyone with a message you know um we could even take the context of our conversation today what what do you want people to take away from our talk today I want people to be kinder to themselves um the one thing I learned after having a baby is that taking a step back, I mean, after having 
baby number four <laughs> is taking a step back is not, it's not a bad thing. It's not, it, saying no is not coming from a place of weakness. It's coming from a place of strength. It's coming from a you recognizing yourself, your priorities, your, and prioritizing, you know, the things that, that pay off in the long term. Um, so at the end of the day, be kind to yourself and you'll be prouder of your decisions. I love that. Cause I meant to ask you one of the things you were saying about maybe it was a regretful moment or, but like, if you kind of like forgave yourself for that, like if you kind of looked back and said, yeah, but I did the best I could at the time. And I think that we all are so hard on ourselves and we have to live with ourselves. Like our thoughts in our brain are what we wake up with, go to sleep with and are with all day, every day. And if you can't be a little nice to yourself. Like it's just a really horrible place to live and it ends up dictating your actions and how you show up. It gets really exhausting and draining just because of the thoughts in your own head. So I think that's a beautiful message um, to leave off with and tell everyone how we can follow you. Oh, <laughs> um, by the way, if you haven't seen the, um, the video on this, I've been blushing most of the time. So my face is like all red. <laughs> so thank you. Um, but you can follow me on Instagram. My at is cooking in heels with two S's at the end. Yeah. The one without, without the extra S was taken. So um, you can also follow me on my blog, but I promise you, I don't post there. So, you know, it'll be disappointing. Her posts are so inspirational. I actually love following them. Um, it's just your aesthetic is beautiful and your vision's beautiful. And now that people got to hear from you on here, I hope they see what I see being friends with you, that it translates into your work, meaning who you are trans into your work. Like if there's someone that I have to say, looking at their work is like who they are, it's you. Oh, thank yeah, you. Because your aesthetic, especially with the shift in your brand new gorgeous kitchen, FYI, um, thank God, is that like, I don't know, just a very like duh, you like, it's just, I can't explain. It. People have to go on your Instagram and see it, then listen to this then listen to this and see your Instagram. And they'll be like, I know exactly what you were talking about. Um, so I want to thank you again and everyone can follow you there. We're looking forward to see what you have coming up. Thank you. And Beth, the feeling is absolutely mutual. If there's anybody who can like do a, an incredible job at everything that you do, and like put like the finishing touch on every single project. It's you. So oh, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to know you and a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for having me on. It was yeah. so nice to get to speak with you, you too. and everybody who's listening. <laughs> Don't forget to tune in for more episodes on Spotify and be sure to follow us on TikTok at Instagram at Nourished by Beth for more wellness ideas. Mm -hmm.